Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me. And today I'm sharing with you the wonderful news from the WHO that COVID vaccines have saved 1.4 million lives across Europe. It's remarkable how you can understand how successful this is, but can't explain how people get severe disease. Well, from my perspective, from the scientific view, I'm interested in how patients die. And therefore, if I understand how they die, I can then explain the nuances. Like, for instance, how did Africa not get decimated with COVID-19? They had low vaccination rate. So if you can't explain that, how then can you go on to make claims and credit for everything else? So today, what I'll be going through, I'll give you a quick insight into what the topics are. Here, I'll be talking about the WHO and the fact that um, this is the, uh, the the media coverage that they've had. I'll go through that quickly. I'll also be talking about what has happened in Africa with regards to vaccine coverage. I'll also be looking at our world in data and the vaccine doses being done in one specific area, which is Zambia. And I'll quickly mention something about the prevalence of pre-existing serological cross-reactivity for SARS-CoV-2. Additionally, I'll be linking you into some of the research that I've done, which breaks down why you get severe disease and who is actually at risk for severe COVID-19. So that's essentially what I'll go through quickly in a minute or two. Before I start, I'd just like to remind everyone who may be interested, coming up in a few days, or if you've missed it, you will see a link for it, is our nitric oxide and COVID presentation. So nitric oxide and COVID, potential strategies for improving outcomes. Again, being creative with research and science to come up with unusual patterns that may help to prevent severe disease. Additionally, you can join us on our Humming Heroes, where in collaboration with Lumentia, I'm putting together a book that will hopefully clarify some of the ideas around mucosal immunity and how nitric oxide could help. Join our Kickstarter on the link below. So, and why is this now an important topic? So I've got here the World Health uh, uh, Organization statement, and this is from uh, January 2024. And what they've said here is COVID-19 vaccinations have saved more than 1.4 million lives in the European region, a new study finds. Uh, firstly, I couldn't yet find the study. I'm not sure if it's peer reviewed as yet. But it's relevant in terms of these are likely to be computational models where they are anticipating the reason that they, so many lives were saved. And you can see here, and as they pointed out since the introduction in December 2020, COVID 19s have reduced deaths due to the pandemic by at least 57%, saving more than 1.4 million lives in the WHO Eastern and European region. Now, what is what I'm clarifying here is not that COVID vaccines may have reduced deaths from severe disease, but to say 1.4 million when you don't fully explain the mechanism of severe disease and you don't explain what has happened in Africa. How do you explain Africa? Now, let's just break that down into a little bit more detail. And then I'll come back to why it's so important to understand the science. So what I've got here is the Africa dashboard. And this here is showing the CDC COVID-19 vaccine dashboard. And they're looking at all of Africa and they have delivered a one, uh, technically 1 billion doses of vaccines, 1.137. And they've covered 51%, 51.8% of Africa. And they've shown it here by member state and which vaccine they have given. That link is in the description. The first thing that I will say is that I am very disappointed that Africa didn't take the lead on COVID-19. By far, they had the best outcomes. Up until probably certainly 2022, even after Omicron, they had by far the best outcomes from the pandemic. 
How do you explain that? Because they also had the lowest vaccine coverage. Now those numbers, when I show you 51%, I'm going to break it down because the timing is actually very, very important. So here you have a situation where you first have to ask what was happening in Africa. And I've picked one country in Africa, I've picked Zambia, just because they have done a significant amount of vaccination. And this is from our world in data. And I've, I've got here, these are the peaks in terms of deaths daily new uh, confirmed COVID-19 deaths. And this is from the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, all the way out till now. And you can see here that in August 2020, they had a peak. Then in February 2021, they had another peak. And, that's, uh, and that, uh, that was probably the, the beta variant. And then you had the Delta variant here, this peak. Now, what's important to note is that even though this was a peak, you are talking about just about 250 deaths. So this is not a lot of numbers. Compared to what was happening in the rest of the world, this is a tiny number. Then they had a little bump here with regards to Omicron, and then it ended. So that was the situation of Africa. Now, what you have to then do is look carefully at what they then did around vaccination, because that's the bit that I was trying to understand. They had a brilliant response, low deaths in terms of Zambia, yet they have gone to vaccinate most of their population. I'm not talking about just a high risk here, who that could make sense, but trying to target your whole population. I'm trying to understand the logic in it. So here you have the daily COVID-19 vaccine doses administered. And you can see here again, this is in uh, 20. 21, because they didn't really get anything prior to April 2021, they started to get some vaccines, low amounts, all the way into December. This was one of the horrific situations in the pandemic, is that if COVID was as lethal, we would have left Africa to die. But anyway, here they're plodding along, still getting some vaccine doses. And then at this point here, and this is just about May 2022, so that's after Omicron, you see one big surge, and then they have another surge here in October 2022. Let it be clear, this was probably after the rest of the world had been not taking their vaccines, so there was vaccines left over. It's important for Africa to know you are not the priority here. Just reminding you, this is what was after what was left that you were given. Why did you doubt your results in the first place? And again, you can see here from our world in data, you can see for Zambia, as I said, you can see this is the number of people who had at least one dose. You can see it was plodding along here until in about May 2022, you see the surge. This is after they had faced Omicron and therefore had broad population level mucosal immunity. Why didn't they take the lead? They had the best results, the best outcomes. Why didn't they say, why don't you explain why we have done so well with poor health infrastructure, huge rural populations, and limited access to vaccines? How did Africa as a whole do so well? So here is now the science, and I'll try and explain this science to you as simply as I can. The first thing you have to understand is what causes severe disease in COVID-19. In truth, we knew this from the data or the research that was done in about 2016 with SARS-CoV. The mechanism of disease is technically the same. And it's all about the interferon response. If you have a dysregulated interferon response, you're going to get severe disease. This is most fascinating. Look at this carefully here. This dark blue is interferon. And what it's showing you here is that, and green here represents the viral load. So when someone gets infected, if they have an early interferon response, that means that the immune system, the mucosal immune system recognizes it, they have mild disease. They don't end up with severe disease. And again, even when you have a huge surge of virus in COVID and in, in SARS-CoV, 
If they had a poor interferon response, that means if they're immune suppressed, if they are old, very frail, again, they had mild disease. What caused severe disease was a delayed, strong interferon response. Now, that's just the science. And it explains why some people, even very frail people with comorbidities, didn't die from COVID-19. And this leads me to another very, very important slide, I think, that I, I put together just to try and explain this. If you get this, you understand severe COVID-19. You have a number of factors that need to come together. So I've created this Venn diagram. One, you need to have the representative age, obesity, comorbidities. If you have this, in theory, you're at risk of severe COVID-19. So this was a cohort who probably would have benefited most from vaccination. Additionally, interferon autoantibodies. Our problem was we didn't know which people who could be younger had interferon autoantibodies. The other thing was a strong systemic immune response. That means that that's the delayed interferon. So if you had weak immunity, and this is talking about the first and second waves, <clears throat> it's a bit different now, but if you had strong systemic immunity, that's what predisposed you to severe COVID-19 in combination with all of this, plus critically, no recent exposure to any coronavirus. I didn't say SARS-CoV-2. Any coronavirus, any cold virus would have caused the mucosal immunity to give an interferon response, which would have prevented severe COVID-19 unless that person had interferon autoantibodies. <clears throat> That's the science. If you understand the science, you can then understand why it was that some areas probably did so well. And you can see as well in Africa, and this is a paper that um, I pulled up here, they recognized that from 2021, there was high prevalence of pre-existing serological cross-reactivity against SARS-CoV-2 in sub-Saharan Africa. So a lot of people were exposed to other coronaviruses, and therefore they had high levels of mucosal immunity, which would have prevented severe disease. You can look at the paper. It's not a big study, but it's still quite relevant. Additionally, in many parts of Africa, they have been using at population level a number of drugs that are not considered to be relevant with COVID-19. If we had been thinking about the science, and if we had just been looking for answers, the scientific community would have gone back to look at Africa and say, how did they have such a good outcome with regards to COVID-19? And they would have looked at every option, including the drugs that they were using at population level that could have had an impact. And we could have been in a completely different place than we are now. So taking it from another angle, just a reminder in terms of my slides, I've put this together to try and see if I can help somebody understand it. First question, have you got prior exposure to any coronavirus? If the answer is yes, the next question is, do you have interferon autoantibodies? If you don't, you have more protection. But if you have interferon autoantibodies that, that dysregulate that interferon response, you are at risk. And on top of it, if you have the comorbidities and a strong systemic immune response, you are at much higher risk of severe COVID-19. So a weak immune response initially was almost protective. You wouldn't get severe COVID-19. What's remarkable is this has changed since we have done broad population level vaccination, that those people who seem to be at lower risk are no longer the same. So people who are immune suppressed in the first wave are no longer as protected subsequently. These are important scientific questions that we really, really need to answer. So the point is this, in order to make that claim, 
And this is why I think the science is so important. So I'll take you back to what that claim was, that more than 1.4 million lives were saved. If they don't include in their analysis the fact that almost 90% of the population was already exposed to any coronavirus and would not have a delayed interferon response, then those numbers are unlikely to be inaccurate. But who am I? This is coming from our lead organization. So just a reminder as to what I said. Anything that delays this interferon response is likely to lead to severe disease. And so whether it's interferon autoantibodies or no prior exposure to any coronavirus or COVID-19, you are at higher risk of SARS uh, severe disease. Just remember, at this point, almost everybody has been exposed to um, Omicron. And so there is going to be only a small number of people, if any, who don't have mucosal immunity and therefore wouldn't respond in that way to interferon. And so seeing severe COVID-19 as an illness is unlikely to occur at this point unless there are other mechanisms at play. And so what we have to prepare for now, as excess deaths remain up, especially across highly vaccinated regions, the question that needs to be asked is, are we moving into a different phase of the pandemic where different mechanisms leading to severe disease are now extremely important to understand? This is a different phase. But just remember, if we had taken or let Africa take the lead, it's very unlikely the world would be where it is now. We still have challenges in front of us. And there are no amount of um, hiding those facts is going to change that reality. Have a good evening.